Hey everybody, welcome back to the Hello. channel. We have got a great little off-season uh, video for you guys here today. Um, so we've had the RV, the Airstream for half a year, almost a half a year. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's in storage. <laughs> He's so sad. He's so sad. Periodically, when we see our empty driveways, he will get so sad. Um, anyway, I'll be anyway, <laughs> I'm not that sad. Um, what was that? Oh, so we had that for half a year, mm -hmm. and we also did a one month full time uh, RV trip. So, and also uh, we we share our very first RV pickup video. Uh, on the channel that was our very first video mm -hmm. so today I wanted to do a little bit of a, like a not recap like what we learned a follow up. Uh, yes and reflect especially uh, especially I also because after our first pickup trip I was really down on that and once I get more you know calm and uh, uh, in a better state I reflect on what exactly happened and I want to kind of uh, uh, share some not really tips, just what happened. Yeah, just what we're learning, yeah. what happened, where we're going with yeah. things. Um, we're still new as uh, mm -hmm. you know, and still learning and just wanted to share with you how we're progressing. Mm -hmm. um, you guys have provided us already with tons of great uh, input and tips. Mm -hmm. So keep on shooting those comments in. We, we really appreciate it. And uh, if at some point throughout the video you're thinking, geez, this is a pretty good video. Boom, crack the <laughs> thumbs up. <laughs> Maybe even subscribe. Who knows? Like, depends if you're into that. A few weeks ago, uh, we posted a video about my rejection story at the border. Uh, but in that uh, video, we didn't touch on our, our much on uh, didn't touch much on our RV crossing experience. Our very uh, first. You probably guessed it was pretty smooth. Other than that, I got rejected because of my mm. uh, document file stuff. Um, overall, it was very, very smooth. Uh, how should I say? I like if you have uh, watched our preparing the packing video. I was very nervous. I did mm. many calls, and even during the trip, when we we're still in Canada part, whenever we met up with uh, RVers and fellow travelers, we always uh, one ask them about their experience. Yeah. Hey, do you bring anything? How, do you How was the border? It? Exactly. Mm. And most of the time, the answer is mm. don't bring any food. Don't bring any fresh food. Uh, you can always get that in America, which in my case mm -hmm. is a little bit different because <laughs> of my diet. Uh, yeah, we cannot get that in America easily. Exactly. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it ended up we brought all that we want. And uh, of course, because we caught and stuff, we know, okay, no fresh tomato, no fresh pepper. But if they're cooked, like a can and stuff, it's fine. So mm -hmm. we were pretty strict to what we learned from the call. The, the, they have a recorded list of what you can bring, what you cannot. And we even talked to an agricultural agent. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that helps. And actually, yeah. we, got a, we got an a border agent ask us, do you have any food uh, in your trailer, we say yes. Do you have any meat? We say yes. What are the meat you have, right? So yeah, we give the list so of quick. Yeah, the, uh, bacon, ribs, and stuff. Yeah, yeah Costco them. ribs and you know, a bunch of frozen meat. He's yeah. like, uh, then he clarified it. He so. asked, uh, do you have a poultry? Because chicken and currently. And chicken, I think chicken, he asked. Yeah, I currently mean, no. is no chicken. Mm. Uh, I don't know if the policy is going to change from time to time or different uh, entry point. So I always feel like uh, calling the point you yeah, just enter. Check the port, port of entry, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a, always a good thing. Yeah, that's about it. Call, be prepared, and mm. be, be prepared to lose some stuff. Just, yes. you know, sometimes you get one set of the rules and then they changed sort of like how we thought we were going to go straight through <laughs> and we got rejected. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. And I, I, I was prepared. If some of my mushroom has to be dumped, I was like, oh, well, but at least, uh, you know, um, We'll this have was, yeah, 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 it's better than nothing. We got waved through in the end, it was all really smooth. They're totally fine with mm -hmm. all the ribs we mm -hmm. have. The other great thing that happened uh, since we got Garfield in July is we went on our, uh, our first really long trip with Garfield. 
it wasn't our first long trip, me and you. We've yeah. done some uh, really, you know, 30 day jaunts, 28 day jaunts uh, uh, together, but this was the first one with Garfield. So that was super exciting. Yeah, and, and it's a challenging, exciting mm. part. <laughs> we're not talking. Here is all about the challenging part. <laughs> yeah, and learning part, right? Yes. I mean, learn a lot about. Oh boy. <laughs> so I think a few key things. I mean, like uh, you mentioned, right? We, we've had a long trip before, so a mm -hmm. lot of things that we're used to. But I found to travel. I guess this is a kind of a mindset is I'm a little bit comparing my previously long time van traveling vis-a-vis -vis the RV traveling, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? And I know many people feel like, oh, RV is like you bring your home, it's so easy breezy. <laughs> uh, I feel like it's actually more mental and physically required, uh, demanding. I would, it's demanding. 100% for me more physically right. demanding. There is right. just heavy stuff that you got to do. You got to hitch, you got to unhitch, you got to carry heavy stuff around. You uh, love hitching, though. Yeah, I love it. I love hitching because I love <laughs> Garfield. Okay, a little side story. Physical. When we just got that, my mindset about hitching is that this is the annoying part. So I want that to be most efficient, quickest. Oh, yeah. So I really try to develop a method, almost military like a military routine. style, yeah. two person, get that done ASAP. Then I discovered that that's not his mindset. Yeah. He enjoyed that. It's like a moment with his toy. So I quit that. And just to specify right now, when he said the hitching is a physical, is because after that, I'm like, I'm tapping out because I don't enjoy that. If you enjoy that, you do that. And that's why he's doing all the hitching thing yeah. himself. And I'm not helping out. Yeah, no, um, I like the, or I have it organized. I have a checklist. I have the yeah, way I yeah. do it, but it doesn't have to be every yeah. single step like a dance. <laughs> like it's okay if you just do that in the right order. It doesn't have to happen at the right exact moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just a totally different mindset and he's not getting any help from me by doing, uh, when doing the hitching. So it's for sure very physical. I, I wouldn't imagine that, but I'm not helping. Not too bad. But it's, <laughs> no? it's, it, but before, Compared to the van, you jump in the driver's seat, you right. go. Or maybe do a quick walk around, yes, make sure yes. you didn't forget anything, nothing's hanging off your vehicle. But other than that, you jump in, you go. Now you gotta have a little bit of lead time. Yeah, yeah, no it is. Prep. Yeah, and in terms of, uh, for me, the mental thing is uh, when you plan the RV trip, you really, you, <laughs> you're constricted by dump station, right? It's not just the two of us find a Starbucks, we can solve the issue. But right. RV station, uh, the dump station, you have to know there are one on the way and mm -hmm. stuff. So mm -hmm. that costs a lot of extra thinking, timing, Just planning. A new, new planning element exactly. for us that we weren't used to. Where exactly. we were, they were pretty plentiful. Um, yeah. You know, but it's something we always have to yeah. consider. Another layer of stress during the time, especially our trip is about a burden, right? <laughs> and migration. So I'm checking the weather, I'm planning a few trips, we never know where we're, uh, like the timing, in terms of the timing mm -hmm. of, uh, of arriving to destination. So um, it's very stressful I found sometimes, and so we develop this kind of little methods and uh, stuff. Like on my cell phone, I set alarm at 8 p.m. call, no more talking. <laughs> I don't want to fight. You know, fighting is just the burning extra and not being productive. So it's a very mean alarm to tell myself. So when I see that alarm and I'm telling you, hey, it's 8 p.m., no matter what we're planning, we're not planning anymore. Yeah, it works just, both ways too because we did have a little late in the evening sort of we're trying to organize and it got a little bit heated and that's where the alarm came out. But yes. sometimes, you sometimes forget too when I use it. I'm like, hey, it's past yes. 8 p.m. I'm not talking about that. Yes, yes, we, we use that on each other. And, mm. and it's not literally like no one more words is evil or something. No, it's just that even when good days relax and stuff, we're like, yeah. you know what? Just not, we can talk all light and fluffy, yeah. but we're not gonna talk about our planning, next step, 
to yeah. how we're gonna, how many days we're staying here. Just no more serious talk. And right? a nice side effect of that too is we pull that talk forward now. We get it done. Yeah, we we'll make sure it goes fresher. When our mind is, mm. yeah, that that I, I found that was really helpful. Like mm. early time of the trip, we had uh, several fights because of this, and it wasn't. What? It's several. Bad. It's getting worse and worse. I feel we like did, though. at least we did. I have several. And it's that kind of a, mm, the fight that does not bring us anywhere further. We're just arguing on yeah. things. Just that tired, cranky, just cranky exactly. style. Exactly, not roachy. productive. I get pretty roachy past 8 p.m. Yeah, same here. I got, you know, my mind is just empty. So I didn't like those non productive uh, waste of energy and. That's a trick we use, um, mm -hmm. and not to mention we're used to be together the whole time. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we travel and stuff, nothing is new, but still yeah. with this... Yeah, we're at home, we're together. Yeah, we didn't time, need so that at all that. normally. Yeah. It's not because we're together, it's because of this, uh, mm. I think, that extra toll yeah. from the That RV extra mental and physical exactly. pressure. Exactly, yeah. yeah. One more thing that we didn't do well though. In this trip, as just with we all well. our yeah, with all our long trips, we plan. Oh. We know rest day is important. We plan for rest day, and rest day is never a rest day. Never, we need a we need a yeah. rest week. Something or like something that. like we just always, you know, all the long trips we always plan what? rest day. They always get trampled by. We, yes. I don't know how it happens, but we'll have. We're to not moving, out. but we're like grocery shopping. Well, yeah. We're planning. Yeah. Or it just always like uh, at the end of the day, we're like, this is not a rest day. Yeah, it's very yeah. stressful. So look, if you've decoded, if you've <laughs> figured out how to execute the rest day with style and excellence, please, <laughs> please leave us a comment and let us know what is your trick. We shared the 8 p.m. no talk alarm. <laughs> share with us your secret, please. <laughs> Lastly, I want to share a little reflection. Uh, on our first video or more specifically our pickup trip that experience because mm. after that after we pick up the rv i was like i really didn't enjoy that i was in so much stress and stuff so once, i still did <laughs> so once i kind of calmed down and rethink what happened and my mind mindset and everything i feel like i how should I say? I, I want to know. First, I was stressed out, and I feel like my tolerance level with stress is also very low. So, I feel like a, f a few things that I learned is before I pick up the RV, you have to have a good rest. I had a whole week before the whole pickup thing, not freaking out, but really stressfully planning pick up and things to learn and stuff. The mm. whole mind is just don't forget anything. What if this, what if that, that was not helpful. It really puts me at a very uh, vulnerable place when anything goes wrong, I will get really frustrated and agitated. So I feel like he has a lot of excitement with yeah, the pick up. Yeah, I was the opposite. I was right? like just spinning. <laughs> it is exciting. Before. Which is also somewhat draining, but I don't know if you would be able to control that. I certainly couldn't. Yeah, for me it's just, you know, stress, stress. And I didn't detect that. I usually do pretty well reflecting on myself to catch myself before I'm so so stressed out, but I didn't. And that ended up become every little thing will get me so negative about this RV experience, which now is I'm getting a little bit better and more normal me. And another thing I found with the, why the whole the pickup was so miserable for me was because I realized that there's so much uncertainty in it for me. Mm. So much meaning not so much. The tank issue for me was a major issue. If I, I were used to the van line. Yeah, yeah. Right? I think everything's new though. But yes. Right, tanks. but the tank has an overhand like I don't know when it's a full. I don't know that a, Right. 30%, what does 30% mean? How yeah. accurate is it? And later on, we learn that it's not a linear, right? The initial, like 90%, it drops really slow. Why is it 30%? Under 30%, the whole 
the the fresh water tank drops really fast so just getting to know the tanks exactly really, yeah. to really learn this number what it means what does that it mean how really, many days yes right? So to overcome that, we did test trips, and that was really helpful. Yes. Especially for this like long trip planning, we know mm -hmm. that our limit with the fresh tank was three days, mm -hmm. and our limit with the black and gray is six days. So mm -hmm. yeah. So that was really now I know what's then I can play around with the different threshold, but now I know my limits, and that gave me a lot of release, and. Yeah, a, lot, a big breath of yeah. like sort of a sigh of relief. We can now, when we're planning, we know what the parameters are. So when we mm. first started, we're like, well, when do we need a dump station? When do we need fresh water? We're not really sure yet. Right. Now we know that these are the parameters we use. These parameters have been working so far, and it's much easier to say, okay, well, we mm. need to, we need to top up the fresh, you know, this day. So we plan it in. Yeah. yeah. And another interesting thing, I think we were kind of lucky. I think we didn't have the worst luck ever. Oh. Otherwise, I would have just cry on side like crazy. But anyways, it's a provincial park. Um, our experience, because I book the uh, provincial park, the site online, they choose the lands and stuff. I never expected the road being so narrow mm. and the entrance and the, the whole reversing thing for me. Uh, Never reverse, never parked a trailer. I had to do this. Did it great. That was so stressful. But, but, but on the I, other hand, we have some friends who have used parks, and when yes. they arrived with their rig, mm. they had to go back to the gate and say, Yeah, your site is wrong. It doesn't, it, our rig doesn't fit. So we picked a, you know, up to 30 feet. Uh, trailer we're mm. 27 28 so uh, it fit and you jammed it in there like a boss and my, my the Could thing is my mindset is because I choose that and they gave me this site and for sure I can fit it mm -hmm. that's why I'm like no matter what I can I must be able to mm -hmm. but what if I was wrong what if I wasn't lucky and it can it actually is not possible but because I didn't know and I tried to jam the thing you were right? wrong. <laughs> You did great. So, and because my experience and also what we heard from RV, I would, if I could redo this for the first trip, I wouldn't book a provincial park mm. just for what ifs. Um, right. Maybe just go straight home. Right. It wasn't so bad. <laughs> or go some RV park. Or do something like what we did, if possible. I don't know how this would, but one of the things we did was we practiced our minds out once we got home. Yes, we did. To get more familiar with backing the trailer, me to get familiar and you to get familiar with marshalling and that was super helpful. Yes, we had hours of a practice. Parking lot practice, parking yeah. yeah. Bring some cones and just back her in, pull her out, back her in. <laughs> so a couple other things that we got to experience uh, since our first trip and that were great for uh, learning just how things work and how this is going to be is I got to use the uh, generator, the Honda, the little EU2200i or whatever it is mm -hmm. that we got for when we're boondocking. I got to use that a lot more, get familiar with uh, how long that tank lasts, a long time, um, <laughs> and um, how it runs, where to tuck it when it's raining, and things like this. Again, practice trips were super helpful. Also, you made sure to use it on the practice trips, made great use of it also on the long trip. And we introduced Starlink into our arsenal of tools. Um, on some of the short trips, mm -hmm. we realized that the internet was simply not going to be reliable enough for uh, the for what we needed it for. So mm -hmm. we went ahead and grabbed uh, Starlink. That was fantastic. Um, but how fantastic it was and or wasn't yeah. is a topic. With a little issue. issue. Yeah, it yeah. depends on your geography. It, yeah, it depends on your. It depends on lots of things. So yeah. what we're going to do with that is that's a topic for a whole another video. So, um, you know, great plug. Subscribe to the channel if you're interested to see how Starlink <laughs> performs in various locations and in various tree coverage and whatnot. But that about wraps it up for this video and uh, how things are going for us. So yeah, please hit the thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out. Comments, comments, comments. Let us know um, if, if there's some things that you think might help us out based on what you heard here. We'd love to hear from you. Mm -hmm. um, even if you just want to say, hey, what's up? Also cool. We'll see you next time. See you next time.